Okay, this is it. This is number 10. Uh, this is tutorial number 10. We are going to finish this phone stand, even though we had a little bit of a hiccup, and then we kind of started over, and then here we are. There's the first thing I'd like to say, if you are following any of this, um, there is a dozen ways to make everything. You know, you can start from a single plane like we did. You could start from a box. When I started this, I started from a cylinder. Maybe not the best thing to start from. Uh, but I was just thinking about the points of articulation. It's kind of what took my attention. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to finish what we started. So, uh, by the way, I have my agoraphobic nosebleed t-shirt on. Uh, the band is kind of scum, but uh, I really like that album that cats on and so i support that album if they're a bunch of sleaze bags that's too bad but uh that album rocks anyways can't remember what it's called i listen to it all the time uh okay so let's go over to the software um this is where we left off it's amazing right okay let's just blast through this let's just get it done you know i was gonna go through and finish all the edge loops and like make it perfect but you know what? We gave it enough definition here. I mean, we gave it enough uh, chamfers and edges uh, that, you know, if we're out far enough, I mean, yeah, we could turbo smooth it. Um, and we could probably just get away with smoothing groups. So if we just render this bad boy, you know, from there, I mean, we could zoom in. Let's turn this on so we can see when we zoom in here. Uh, let's just kind of, oops. You know, it's not super bad. You know, if we, you know, if you see like that, it's pretty solid. You know, it's pretty solid. The You can see a little bit of the uh, edging, edges along here. So if we zoom in, like, yeah, if you get in real close. But the smoothing groups, smoothing groups has really toned it down. Uh, we added enough uh, edges. I kind of always like to have a symmetry point, so that edge in the middle. Uh, but, you know, we'll turbo, we'll, okay, maybe we'll turbo smooth it, but uh, instead of going and finishing it, like, completely with four-sided polygons, maybe we'll do that in a bonus video, if you guys care. Uh, but let's just get this done, because I do want to talk about a couple things. I want to talk about uh, just finishing a model, throwing a couple lights in, uh, putting a material on there, and let's put a logo on there. Putting a logo on there takes like five seconds. We could just projection map it, um, which, you know, it's not like this thing is going to be running around. We don't have to bind anything. Um, but we could just projection map our name, like, right there. You could just call it something. Uh, so let's do that, okay? Let's finish this model up, okay? So let's pull up the images. What do we have left? Uh, yesterday I said that we had these little rubber stoppers that are on the back side uh, and on the little footies. I'm calling them footies. They're called footies now. So the footies and the back side. We can make those real quick, but what I'm more concerned about is this circle right here. So what we could do is we could poly model it. That is an option. It takes a minute. Um, we could slice this up and then re uh, use another, um, what do you call it, uh, shell modifier. But instead of dropping another shell modifier on it, uh, let's just do something fancy. Let's just Boolean it, and then we're going to work those smoothing groups, and then uh, we'll make sure we align that uh, the, the Boolean object perfectly. And we're going to step up that Boolean. Let's do like a 16-sided 16, 16, uh, uh, cylinder. We'll bash it through there. But I'm also going to show you a trick. There is a sweet trick. So if we look at this object like this, you don't know what the angle of this curvature is, do you? You have no idea, because I have no idea. Okay, so let's find out what that is. Okay, so there's this really cool trick in the tool bag here of uh, of stuff. Uh, it's just a protractor, okay? You, you, you lay down three uh, protractor points, or you could do other objects. I just use protractor. Uh, you just drop three of these down, and then you measure an angle. I'm going to show you how to do that, because we want to measure this angle down, because if we're going to ram a cylinder through here, we don't want to, let's just let's just pretend we're going to ram a cylinder through here. So let's do 
Go to creation panel, cylinder. Let's just make a dummy cylinder here. Blow it up like that. All right, let's get rid of the height segments. And let's, uh, let's make sure it's 16. Might need more, but it's okay for now. So if we do one of these, so I got my snapping tool on it, looks like. Yep, still a snapping it. And let's just say, for instance, I want to put it through here. Well, that doesn't really line up. Oops, let's get, <laughs> let's get it back in the center here. There we go. It doesn't really line up with the angle, right? I would have to do it by eye. And that kind of sucks, right? Like, what is that? Like, even if we do this, it doesn't really line up. Because look at this. Look at that. Our face comes in at a weird angle, right? So sometimes you want to know exactly what those angles are. And it's a real bear to, like, I don't know. Turn this on, turn off your stamping tool, and then, like, get it stupid perfect. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know, I could be off. I could be crazy. So let's uh, get that out of the way for a second. And I'm going to show you a, a nice trick. So we want to measure the angle of this backside. Okay, so let's throw down. So go into your creation panel, and then there's tools uh, right here. And over here, systems? No, it's next to systems. It is called helpers. So let's drop down a, oops, we got to click that first. Let's drop down three protractor points. Okay, let's go one, two, three. Okay, I want to, well, first off, they work like, uh, like three points when you're measuring an angle. I'll show you. So select the center one, go to the modify panel, and it's going to ask you to select the other two because this is going to be, the corner of the angle, or the, I don't know what you'd call it math, uh, but let's just select the first one here, and let's select the second one here. Okay, it's already selecting an angle, or it's already giving you an angle, because at the top, look how I didn't measure them out right, so this is telling me that's 170. That's really handy, but we don't want that right now. So, let's uh, move these to a specific point. So let's put this one. So we want to measure this angle. So we're just basically we just want this polygon on the oops. Let's do that again. Basically, we just want this polygon on the back, this face. We want to see what angle this face is. So technically, we just need to put one of these dots here, or one of these points here, one of these points here, and then one straight across because it's level. We don't want to go here here and then here because then we have to line i'll show you so let's grab these guys let's put them all uh at the zero on the x-axis zero and then zero okay so they should be at the halfway point there there okay so let's put this guy we're gonna put we're gonna snap this to the bottom of our pink backside here so let's put it right there, snap it right to that guy. And let's grab this other guy. Let's snap it to that same spot, but then move it forward, right? Because this is the bottom. So let's, I don't know, we could just snap it to the to there. So right now it looks like this. Okay, and now we take our last one and we snap it to the top of that polygon, that n-gon, because it has a whack amount of faces. Now, reveal. We select this guy. This is now the center angle, the center of the angle where the two points meet. And it's telling us our angle is 72.4487. Okay, so that means if I rotate this thing, what was it? 72.448? Okay, if I rotate this guy, turn off your snapping tool. Actually, let's just type it in. So we want to rotate this way. So make sure, it, okay, so that's the X. So let's go right here where it says 90 because it's turned 90. Let's do 72.48. You know, we don't have to be super particular. So 72 point, well, we'll just do 4, 4, or is it 4, 4, 4, 8, 4, 4, 8, 8, 4, I don't know, 4, 8, I think it's 4, 8, whatever, doesn't matter, 4, 8, bam. Okay, let's double check what that was just, just because. It was 72.4887, all right, so let's add 8, 7. I don't even know if you can go that far. Can you go that far? 8, 7, does it care? Okay, so it rounded us up to 9. So we're going to 48, 9. Okay, it's close enough. I mean, it's, you're not going to notice that small of an amount. Now let's snap it to the center. 
let's drop it right to the center here. Okay, so now if we actually go to the side view, it should line up pretty dang well. Like, let's move it over here. And look how look how this line, let's uh, blow this up here. Look how these edges line up really well. Like, these are really, really close, right? The blue and the pink, that line there, it's pretty solid. So I'm just going to leave it there. Ah, that's good. Okay, the center point is now what we're worrying about. So don't worry about the uh, angle anymore. That was just an example of how to maybe get, you know, how an angle is is laying like so that was 72 and a half degrees basically but we wouldn't have known that we would have had to rotate this by hand it would have been a huge pain to figure that out ourselves okay so let's look at our pictures okay so our pictures we need to look at this guy and this guy right and this covers it up a little bit here i think i had that open from last night uh anywho so we need to make this shape here, and then we need to make this shape. So we need a rounded cylinder, and we just need a cylinder, because we're going to bash this hole through, and uh, we're going to use a Boolean operation for that, okay? So this is a little big. So let's go back and do our 3D view here. This is, gonna, this is just eyeballing, so let's bring this down quite a bit. The radius does not need to be that big. I don't know exactly, so let's bring up our viewport, or our image plane. So we should still have these in here. Uh, let's turn on images, and let's kind of eyeball it maybe from the front, and maybe drop it down a little bit if I were to follow that. So let's get rid of the other view. We don't need the side view there. Uh, which one is it? You know, you should really name should really name your front and side instead of plane one and plane two. So that is the side. Okay. So now let's just look at this guy and say, okay, where, where do those circles line up? It looks like it needs to drop down half an inch. Right like that. Because we're lining up the circles here. We're not lining up the cylinder down there. Okay. So that looks good. Maybe this, maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger, just a little bit bigger. Like that. Okay, cool. And now I'm thinking, you know, we need to make another one of these. And I want it to be the same. Okay, so let's go back to this picture here. This circle is like the same thing right here, right? Except it's extended. So if we take this cylinder, cut it in half, maybe bridge it, move it above and then do that same thing uh we might have our solution for the next one so let's just duplicate this guy real quick and let's make that shape okay so let's rotate it back to zero because we we don't we want to use we want to oops not that we want our rotate we want to use the angle that uh this has actually let's just Rotate it like this. Would that be 90? Yes, that'd be 90. So let's rotate it from 72.4889 to 90. Okay. And now let's edit poly this guy. Let's focus in on this guy. Okay. So we need to make this a full object. Uh, and then we need to um, Boolean it just like the other object. Okay. So let's do this. Let's take the caps off. So select your uh, poly mode, that's number four. Delete the back one, delete the front one. And now let's grab the edge mode and let's break it in half. So let's go there. Control click this one. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, split this is the button split in your poly panel on the right here at a poly panel hit that guy and now it looks broken notice how the shading changed a little bit let's grab uh the uh, uh what is this? object mode or element mode sorry and let's pull this up like maybe there we're just ballparking we'll we'll get it close later um we just need to finish the object so if we don't finish the object we get uh we can't uh, boolean an object that isn't closed 
And by closed, I mean, so let's, let's finish this. I'll show you what I mean by closed. So uh, let's bridge these two sides. Let's go like this and like that. And the same thing on the other side, like that. Okay, now we got the capsule open on both sides, right? So let's just make one big swipe across in border mode. So make sure you press three, border mode, and then hit the cap button. Okay, done. Simple as that. Now, if we want to be fancy, we could grab all these faces, smoothing groups, clear all, just make sure those are one smoothing group so that uh, when they cut in, they create that same nice smooth cut, and then we don't have to fiddle with that surface. Okay, now, we need to rotate this back to where it was, right? The other one was at 72. Something you could do, which is pretty fancy, you could just hit uh, a line, align it with that one, and make sure your local, is it Y, is lined up like that. You could do that. Or you could just type in 72 here, 72.489, 72.4—oops, 89. That was a move tool. You want to do it in the rotate. Oh, let's try that again. 72.489. 72.489. Bam. Okay. Pretty rad, right? Pretty rad. Uh, I, <laughs> you could do the same thing by just lining it up, right? You, I mean, by using the align tool. You don't have to type it in. I'm just showing you there's like a million ways to do the same damn things, right? Okay, so how far, how far apart? Let's look at, let's consult the picture. Okay, so there's a nice gap right here. So we need to move that up. And then there's a gap there too. So let's look at ours. Ours does not look tall enough, does it? It does not. Damn it. So what we could do is we could just go back and grab these top ones and pull them up a little bit. Make sure we got them selected equally on both sides. We do. Let's go like this. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And then instead of, instead of typing all that mumbo jumbo, uh, align to that guy, make sure you have local Y so that it bounces up to that one. Okay, now we could move it in the, in the local if you want. Uh, so that our arrow is pointing in the uh, local direction of the object. So if we bring it up there, that looks pretty good. If I were to relate that back piece to this piece, maybe drop that one down just a smidge, maybe, I don't know, maybe drop that one, there you go. Maybe back up a little bit, there we go. Now let's consult the image. Yeah, I like that, good enough. Good enough. All right, let's get rid of that viewport there, or that image plane. So, instead of finishing up those edge loops, let's just knock this out, call it a day. You know, it's a phone stand. It's not rocket science. It doesn't need to be that beautiful. This would be a small detail on a desk somewhere, so don't go too crazy. All right, we can get rid of this, uh, these protractors, or you could just make them invisible. They don't need to be there to confuse you. Um, and now, since these are on the same rotation, they are going to uh, Boolean in quite nice. In fact, nah, if I keep fudging with it, I'm never going to get done. Okay, so select that guy. Let's add a Boolean. And since they're facing the right direction and they have awesome edge looping and it's not affecting this face here, they're going to punch in really well. It's going to look nice. Okay, so let's do uh, bu -bu -bu, let's do this. Let's do the uh, subtract and hit that guy, and let's do another subtract and that guy, and bu -bu -bu -bu, we have the hole cut in this monstrosity. So let's zoom in. Let's click off it. Let's zoom in a little bit. Looks pretty solid. I like it. Okay. Last, but definitely not least, is those little rubber feeties. Okay, we can grab those really easy by just selecting 
geometry that already exists and we can just do it once on each side okay so let's grab this guy and uh, how could we do this we could do it a couple ways so we could grab let's add an editable poly we don't even need to it's just for selection and we could delete it afterwards it's just you know and by the way you can rename this like if i wanted this just for a selection i could call this edit poly or i'll just say selection or I'll just call it select dash edit poly, okay? And now I'm not going to do any features that, like, take anything away or add anything. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to modify the surface. I'm just using it to hold a selection, okay? And then maybe I could duplicate it out and, and fiddle with that. So let's grab this face. Let's grab, uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's grab these top faces. It's going to be a little bit of a selection because, yeah, it just this one kind of sucks. So let's just grab these because that's where the little feeties are. Okay, and now let's rotate so we can get more of the footies. There we go. Okay, so now we got this selection, right? We can just turn this off and every time we come back to it that edit poly and get into the face mode it's ready for us as long as we keep it selected okay but we're actually going to do something uh instead of duplicating the faces like we could shift drag control shift drag and we could make new faces instead of that i'm going to duplicate this item okay so i'm just going to hit edit clone because I want it exactly where it is. Change it to a copy. Don't change it to an instance. An instance means you're copying with all the modifiers, all the instanced work that you've done to that object, like all the modifiers, will be attached to that. So if you edit the instanced one, you edit the original one. So make a copy. So now we got this copy, right? And we've still got that select editable poly. And that's still selected, right? Now let's press Control I. Okay, that is invert selection. So we only have that face and these faces selected. Let's hit Control I. And what's going to happen? Invert selection. Okay, let's delete this. Now we've got just these faces. Okay, because we still have the original one in there. So now let's just change this to a different color. So it's we know it's there. I actually want gray because that's where the little footies are. Okay. Now, what we can do is this top one, we can chamfer the corners and extrude it. So let's do uh, chamfer first and bring the amount up like to right. Oh, we should zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's do that. Oh, sorry. That one. There we go. So we don't need a lot because it's very small, but maybe one more segment just so it looks nice and rounded. And you know what? Actually, before we do that, these ones are, are are taller than they are wide, if I remember right. Yeah, look at these. These are very thin. So let's scale it down. So it, it's all about details, you know? Like, it's just stuff to remember. All of a sudden, I remembered, wait, it's not a square, is it? We could fix it afterwards, but yeah, whatever. Okay, so scale that down. Now we chamfer. And there we go. Okay, now we could extrude this one, or we'll just wait till we extrude the other one. Okay, let's do them at the same time. And we can even do an extrude modifier. We don't even have to extrude it in um, in, in the editable poly. Okay, because, I mean, we have a bunch of modifiers down here that we do not need anymore, right? Because symmetry's gone, boolean's gone. I mean, if we deleted this, we could roll it back, but, you know, this is, this is what we want. So if we look at the... Oh, we missed that thing. Sucks. We want that face. We wanted that face. Um, we could just make that face. We'll make that face. We're gonna save some time. You want to make that face? Let's make that face. We're gonna snap it. So I'm gonna shift drag, hold down shift, use this corner, and snap it right there. Okay. And then we're gonna remake the uh, corners here to chamfer. Okay. So we just did a little trick. We didn't. We didn't have that face. We have that face now. Uh, let's hit chamfer. And maybe let's make it a little bit more. 
so that they don't line up perfectly because it's not perfect, you know? Like, who knows? Actually, let's do let's do more than that. Let's make it skinnier also. Um, uh, do you think the other ones are perfect? Let's consult the photo. Okay, that one's a little rounded more than I think I did. And that one's a little... I mean, this is nitpicky, right? This doesn't really matter. But it's just a little rounded there. Oh, that one's off-center. Look at that. It's off to the side. There's a gap there. Maybe we'll do that. And this one does these don't even these don't even line up to the edge. What the F? Ours is perfect. Okay. So let's uh let's make ours a little different. Let's uh scale these in because they're just stickers, right? They're not gonna be put on there perfect. Let's scale it like that. Let's grab these uh vertices at the end. Let's chamfer these. Yeah, that's fine. A little more rounded than it probably should be and let's only chamfer this one like twice like don't put that many segments in because they're going to run over each other so hit chamfer and then let's bring it up a little and then let's maybe bring take a segment away we don't need that many yeah nobody's going to see that okay perfect love it okay let's check that top one all of a sudden because just realized it's not as wide right so let's just bring it in so we'll just do it by hand. We don't have to do it symmetri uh, symmetrically. Like, let's just pull in this side and we'll pull in the other side. It'll be a little off balance, but that's the sticker, you know? Like that. And like that. There's a little gap there. Okay. So now if we want, you know, if we wanted, we could just collapse this and get rid of that. So I don't usually collapse the stack. You don't need to. Um, you could right-click, collapse all. And you go to editable poly, or you can just right click, convert to editable poly, and there goes your entire stack. Okay. All those modifiers that you did, and including the edit poly. But if you go back and then delete these, you'll get the entire piece back. See, right there. Entire piece. We don't want that though. So let's undo that. So let's collapse, collapse the stack, convert to editable poly. And let's add an extrude modifier on it. Let's just see what happens. Extrude is... Extrude is not in the pile. Edit mesh, edit normal, edit poly, face extrude. There we go. All right. Probably has got a fancy name, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so let's see which way it goes. Do I have to have faces selected first? Now let's look at that. Drag it up. There we go. Okay, so this is based on... This is one of the modifiers that are based on you having to have a selection first. Okay, so when I didn't have these faces selected, like if I undo this, it doesn't know what to extrude. Okay, see that? I it, same The same details are here, but it doesn't know. Some modifiers require you to have a selection before they work. Okay, so let's go back. Let's just select the faces we want to extrude. And then don't don't deselect these. Don't, don't click off. Keep those all selected. And then hit poly again or just go up to face extrude. Just get out of the edit poly. And then go up to face or click off of it. And there you go. Voila. You have a crummy looking little sticker on your thing. Right? And we could add a edit poly or a turbo smooth. Sorry. Um, we could uh, do that, maybe turn on the smoothing groups. It would be really sharp that way. Um, or we could chamfer the edges. It's really, they're so small that I, I, don't, I don't think anybody's going to notice. I don't think anybody's going to care. Um, it's our early model. I plan on doing a few of these with you at least. So let's bring it down a little bit. I have it at 0.3 right now. Three, three. There it is. Okay, 0.3. And so now we got a little bump there, right? Looks good. I don't like the color of our pink, uh, of our pink dealy bop here. So let's um, let's just change the swatch color. We don't need to we don't need to add a material yet. We're just going to talk about it first. Let's go with uh, I like black. I'd want a black one. I have a black one. There we go. Yeah, but now you can't see it. Okay, that's stupid. Let's go with like yeah. You, know, you can always add a custom color. Just add custom color. 
maybe a like a dark bluish like a metal-y concrete-y thing a jig almost black but not really like a bluish grayish gun metalish I'm making up I'm making up colors now okay there perfect that looks cool yes it does okay I did see an issue on this model so I'm gonna fix this real quick so always peruse before you're done okay so that means in here, this got all wonky. Look at that. That's not right. So let's fix that up. Okay, let's add an editable poly. Even though we have this edit poly selection, we can just put an edit poly on top of it. Select faces. Let's delete this face and let's just rebuild. Okay. But I can rebuild. Um, so we need to... We got one, two, three, four edges there. And they don't look like they line up. That's kind of janky. Hmm. So let's just select this face. Let's get rid of it. It looks like there's some hidden faces in here. Okay. So let's go in here. Let's see if we can select any of these faces that are hiding under here. So this is a cleanup. Sometimes, oops, see, there's stuff in here, right? I, ex I extended that, and that is no bueno. Okay, so what we can do is we can grab the vertice that's stacked up here, and let's just see if there's any more. No, it's just that one. Uh, let's do one of these. Let's uh, target weld to get rid of that extra one down there. And it looks like there's a face here. Is that on the back side? Okay. We like where that is. Okay. So let's rebuild this a little bit. The, the Sometimes, sometimes, chamfering looks great. But it's a problem because there's a hidden face under here. Let's get rid of this hidden face because that's the one causing the problem. Okay, and now we got this triangle, so let's go and uh, target weld. Yours might not have this problem. It just depends how a tiny amount my model was off. Okay, so we can uh, let's extrude this face up to here because that's the vertice right there. And then we can maybe add a point here, and then we can just finish it up. Okay, so let's grab this guy. And let's hold shift and extrude up to this point. We don't have our snapping tool on. Turn the snapping tool on. Biggity bam. And then we need a vertice there. So if we select this guy, we should be able to could I press connect no it's not going to add a vertice we need to not split we don't want to chamfer that's crazy uh we want to build that face okay let's let's bridge Let's do this. Let's bridge this face here. Turn off your snapping tool. That might cause issues because snaps want to go to vertices unless you have other things. Or, nope, not chamfer, sorry. Uh, bridge. So let's go like that to right there. That's bridged. Phenomenal. And then we've got this big open face and we got this big open face. And what we can do is let's get rid of that face oops okay still got a tool selected and so that's okay because we'll just cap that I mean shit we could just I mean whatever is that a bad word we could just do that and then we've got the other side we could just bring it straight over mirror that be done with it because both sides are going to be uh we're going to have to 
blast it in half and then just re symmetrical it. That's a word. Just made that word up. Okay. So let's do this. Because we got some weird geometry right here, okay? So let's bring this and let's snap it down to here. Oh, make sure your snapping tool's on. I'm just going to fix this up real quick. We can add that point back in there if we must. Let's zoom out. All right, let's just cap this guy right here. Just cap it. And we'll fix it later. That's for the other guy's channel, right? All right, so let's select this guy. Let's select that guy. Actually, we could finish this side up real quick if we cut. No, actually, that flat side there is fine. Nobody's going to see that. Manufacturing error. Whatever. It's fine. Okay, so let's select these two. Uh, control shift drag to the opposite side right here. Make sure it snaps. Make sure it's element. Flip it around. Like that. So the normals are backwards, which kind of sucks. Oh, geez. These are off too. It's weird. It's like the angle got off or something. Hmm. Because these don't line up. I don't like that. Can I just... That must be why our whole thing didn't line up perfectly. Let's just line these up to the other ones. Weird. Weird. That was a... That was my fault. All right, so let's flip. Not everything is perfect. I apologize. Should have been perfect. And let's just merge these vertices so they are together. Weld. Tra -la, la. All right, now we're going to blast off the other side. And we are going to make sure. Let's make sure that these vertices in the middle line up now because. If that was off, who knows? This one might be a little forward, so we're going to snap it in the Y to that one. Yep, it was off just a hair. Oops. I hope that doesn't mean the model is off. But it is so minuscule. Hopefully nobody can see it. All right. So, fixed. tra -la -la. Unselect that. There we go. Okay, let's add a symmetry modifier. Make sure it's in the Y and it's or X and it's flipped. And there you go. We are back to normal. Okay, now let's unhide with the isolate selection down here. And we cleaned up that inside. That inside was a little wonky. Um, this side's a little wonky. You know, you could add edge loops to finish that off. Like I said, I want to get to these other topics. Let's see how long we've been going. All right, we've been going 38 minutes. We got to get some stuff going here. Okay. Let's do materials. Okay. No. Let's put it on something first. Let's get a floor. Okay. Let's let's just put a plane down. Okay. Let's make a stage. That's a better idea. You should learn how to stage stuff. Okay. So let's make a plane. Let's like drag it from there to there. Oh, God. Why does it always pick hot pink? Okay, uh, let's get rid of the the segments here, okay? And let's put it right in the middle. Holy cow, it is in the middle. I did that by accident. It's like perfectly in the middle. What? That's so weird. No, it's because it's on local. Lies, lies. I'm not perfect. There we go. See? Look at that. It was off. It was off substantially. Okay. So don't scale objects when you can use the parameters. Okay. Because later, when you really get into this, uh, if you scale something in one dimension more than the other, and then you add an edit poly, and then you try to chamfer something circularly, like you want a really rounded edge, it is going to chamfer one of the one of the dimensions 
on the side you scaled more. So it's kind of garbage. So uh, you can always reset your transforms, which is a good idea. But for now, we're not worrying about that. Okay. So let's just make it that. Let's uh, let's make it white. Boom. White. Perfect. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. That might be a little much. I might blow out the render here. Let's uh, zoom in. Let's do a test render real quick. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine for now. Okay. Let's finish up the stage, though because so let's add an editable poly grab this back face uh, and then shift drag up and then we are going to chamfer this right here and we're just going to round the hell out of it let's hit amount to bring it up quite substantially like right there and then add a bunch of segments that we can't see. Let's do more. I don't want to see the fold back there. Because let's say I aim my camera like this, and maybe I do like this. You know, like I want I don't want to see the the smoothing. You know, we'll make sure it's nicely smooth um we could click off this and maybe add a turbo smooth to it and then let's just freeze that plane so now we can't select it uh and let's just do a render it's hovering it's hovering all right so let's fix that right so our object we've got multiple objects here we got three of them oh we need to symmetry these little footies okay so just like everything else, symmetry, flipping the X. Yours may be different. It just depends depends what axis you did, you created it on, okay? So I'm going to select these, and I'm going to group them. So just hit group. Now you can name yours. You should. I guess I'm going to because I should. Okay, we're going to call it uh, ba -ba -ba stand. Stand. And if you have multiple things named stand, Luckily, on the left side here, this symbol means group, okay? So the stand group, it's like multiple shapes in that in that square. On the left-hand side, see my mouse is kind of wiggling. Okay, so now that we got the stand, we can select it here, or we can select it down here. And let's, instead of eyeballing it, let's go to the left viewport here, Ambigulify, and then just drag it down. And what you could do is just affect the pivot point and snap it to the base. Okay, so just affect pivot only. Make sure you got these big, weird, empty arrows. Grab it in the Y and then snap it right to the base, right there. If you need to zoom in further, like if you're new to this, just find one of these vertices. Just go in, right click your snapping tool. Make sure vertex is on. I mean, you could do it to edges, too. I think edges works in vertex mode. Yep, edges works. Yeah, I could snap to that. Or I could snap to this. You could do edges. I prefer vertices or vertex mode. Um, and now you're there, okay? Now, get out of the snapping. Or get out of the uh, pivot. Zoom out here. And instead of eyeballing it, you can just right-click the Y. Right here, the spinner. Oops, sorry, the X. Because I got it in the wrong dimension, don't I? No, it's the Z. Ha! Huh. Jeez, sorry. It's the Z, because Z is up. Um, there we go. Right-click. And now it's perfectly on the ground. Okay. So, let's go back to this guy. X and Y are the base coordinates. Or, X and Y are the base coordinates. And Z is the third dimension. That's vertically. Okay. So, I like this. It's great. Maybe we'll frame it up for now, but we'll we'll add a camera in just a little bit. But we're going to mess with uh, a couple of materials first because I don't like the materials I have. So maybe that's good enough for you. Looks a little dull. Looks a little plain. It's a nice little reflection. I like that. Um, this is just default render stuff. Okay. So we could do things like adding an environment. Uh, I don't have an environment map. I didn't really want to talk about that today. 
Um, but maybe we'll save that for the next one. I just wanted to talk about materials for a second today. I wanted to add our own logo on this guy, okay? So I'm going to fire up Photoshop. If you've got fo Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you've got, fire that guy up, okay? So give it a sec. Let it blow up. Uh, just make sure it's running in the background. We're going to talk for a minute. Um, we're going to do a feature that not a lot of people do anymore. It's called projection mapping. Instead of stacking materials, like this, this device that we're making here is not, uh, it does not need a custom, you know, like material that has unwrapping. You know, we don't need a texture for it. We need a material. I apologize. We need a material. We don't need a texture. The only texture we might need, maybe a bump map, maybe paint uh, for a different color, um, maybe some scratches for the bump map. But for now, uh, we're just going to, that's future talk, we're just going to projection map an image for our logo much like this guy has. Okay, because down here, there's some crap on it. It's got a name. Whose name? I don't know. But I want that to say your name or your logo or something. Right? So let's do that. So where do we start? All right, let's go to the... Uh, well, we should probably make a logo real quick. Okay, don't look at that stuff. That's just stuff I make sometimes. Let's just go like that cover up my work there we go okay so let's just make i don't know let's go to art and illustration thousand by thousand yeah i love it okay so let's uh let's use the crop tool let's just make it wide let's not make it so tall let's make it like 200 ish 200 ish there we go double click that okay we're just going to make some text okay Oh, you know what? I have my logo. Let's just use my logo. You don't even need Photoshop. Maybe you already have a logo. I'm going to do this off screen so you guys can't see my stuff. See? There it goes. It's bouncing in, and now it's bouncing out. All right, so I'm going to go into my crap, and I'm going to find my uh, channel logo. I should have I should have thought of this ahead of time. That would have been awesome. Wouldn't that be great if I thought ahead? Oh, man. Look at me go. Okay, so I gotta find my images and then my logo. Yes. Yes. Okay, mine's a little big, but whatever. We'll just copy this guy and then we will throw it in the folder that it asks. Okay. So maybe you don't need Photoshop. You well you need Photoshop because you're gonna do this, right? But anyways. Okay, so let's open up the material editor. What we've got here. Oop, I'm still searching for bump. Uh, all right. What we've got here is your basic material slate editor. Okay. By that, I mean it is node-based, and it is kind of drag and drop. It's very nice. I, I tried Houdini's. It just kind of pissed me off. <laughs> uh, if anybody's listening who uses Houdini, it's not very handicapped accessible. There's a lot of keyboard shortcuts where your mouse has to be especially on that area of the window. Can't do it. Returned my license. Moving on. Moving on. I'm not bitter. Okay. Standard surface. Okay. We're going to go through uh, the surface we should use for Arnold. We're using the Arnold render. Okay. Physical materials is up on the left here. That's great. But the standard Arnold surface can do everything the physical material can do. But you kind of got to learn it. Physical materials are a shortcut. Standard surface is the way to go first. You can use the shortcuts after you see how it's done. I think. I think. I think. Um, okay, so this is our base output material. We need to create... What do we need? We need like a layer shader because we need a color, and then we need the camera projection, and then we need the bitmap. Okay, so let's first apply this material to the objects. Okay, so I'm going to ungroup this. Group, ungroup. Now they are individual objects. And I am going to drag this specific material. You can, do, you, can, you can select your object first and then right-click, assign material. 
Or you can use this little doohickey right here because this is the out. And then you can just drop it on there. Beautiful, right? Okay. So projection mapping is like taking literally a projector and projecting an image on a brick wall. So if your material is steel, pretend you have a little tiny projector, right? And you're projecting your logo on the steel. Uh, and we're going to do that so we don't have to unwrap this whole thing because that's such a waste. Like, this is just machined garbage. It's a low quality, mo low quality model. We're not looking for, like, 2K or 4K textures on a phone stand. Like, we're not selling it. It's just practice. Maybe next time. We could bring it into... We could bring it into substance and we just go crazy. Um, yeah. So, okay. So, let's make a camera. <clears throat> we need to make a camera and then we need to point it where we want the projection to go. So, I'm just going to make a target camera. I'm just going to click and drag. Beautiful. Done. It's fantastic. You can minimize the material editor for a sec here. Okay. So you've got the target and then you've got the actual camera. So let's put the target and the camera to zero, zero. And the same thing here. Let's bring it to zero and zero. Okay. <coughs> got something in my throat. <coughs> Getting old. Okay. Now grab the camera and lift it straight up because we want it pointing straight down. Well, technically, we want it, well, we want it forward a little bit, right? Because the logo for this company, right? The logo for the company is up forward. So if we click and drag this here, we'll be able to kind of drop it on that spot. So we're good with that. Just leave that camera right there. And now let's go back to the material editor. So we got to start opening up some nodes here. So the first thing we're going to need is a layer shader because we're going to have the layer of the projection on top of the layer of the color, and then those are going to go through into the material. So whatever the material is, these will be sandwiched together before they get output, okay? So this is nice. This is exactly where I want. I could make it bigger. You know, you'll see in a minute. I'll make it bigger. Okay, now we need a layer shader. So you could right-click here and go through, uh, what is it, maps, uh, we want Arnold. We want la image layer. I don't know. I can't remember where half of these are. So, if you're smart, layer, texture, surface. Is it Arnold? Bump? Probably in here. Image, environment, whatever. If you're lazy, you can't remember where every damn thing is, just type layer in here. Okay, this is your search box. And we actually want a layer RGBA because we're going to stack some stuff. So, uh, this means nothing yet. I understand that. Um, but, if you double-click on this, it comes up on the side. As you can see, there's a bunch of units. Of in, there are multiple uh, kind of subsections that you can use materials to stack up. Okay? So, this top one, uh, this, this is going to be into the color channel. So it's not going to make 100% sense right now, but we need to plop it into the base color, okay? Now, the top color is going to be our projection, okay? So let's type in camera. I think it's camera projection. Cam, camera projection. I think it's, we want, I think we want the Arnold one here. Mm -hmm. We want the Arnold one, and the output is going to go to input one. So this, our logo, when we get it finally, loaded in here. If you double click this, you'll see there's a bunch of parameters on the left here. Or sorry, on the right here. So like an image. And we want to blow that up and make sure that we, in our projection color, that we have a material. Okay, so we could click, uh, what is it? Off, uh, off screen color, or projection color, sorry. Projection color, and we could add a bitmap, and that would be general. It's just a bitmap is in here. And we're going to paste my image because I had it in my thing. There it is, Barbaric Melon's web banner. Bam, it's in there. And we're going to put that right there. And let's try to project this down. Okay, so we got the image loaded. 
and it's pointing down and it's going to the color so let's just check the render because my image is white so you're not going to see it update in here oh i had to minimize my bad oh look at that it's huge it's kind of taking up the whole thing that's not right no it is not okay so oh it's because we didn't pick the camera my bad okay so we still have some things to do over here okay so we're projecting. We're not even projecting yet because we haven't picked the camera. So it doesn't even know this camera's a thing yet. So let's click here where it says camera. And let's select that camera. And then let's re-render. Let's open up our window here. My bad. And there it is. Look at that. That's awesome. It's facing the wrong way. We can easily fix that. Okay. So uh, this is your aspect ratio. My image is one by one. So you should just change that to one. And let's actually hit play here to see the changes that happen. Okay. So now, oof, aspect ratio. That doesn't look right. Oh, it's because my image is way wider than it is. It's like four times as wide. So I think it's like... Would you divide that into the other one? So like, I don't know, like I said, one point seven five yeah there we go okay so now it's not so well let's go two. Oh yeah because it's four there we go okay now when we move the camera we can make it bigger or smaller see how it's getting bigger it's pretty sweet all right and then it is facing the wrong way so let's just flip it around 180 make sure your snapping tool is on Let's get that back open here. Let's minimize this, get it out of the way so you can see what we're doing here. So let's just click and drag 180. Bam! Look at that! I got my very own Barbaric Melons uh, phone stand. But I bet you're wondering, well, why is the rest of it black? Well, the reason the rest of it's black is because we didn't add another color that gets smashed underneath it. Okay? So we've got this layer shader, and we got nothing. Right, so this is on top. So let's bring this up here. This is the projection that is going into input one. So we need to just have a color in this guy. So I'm just going to use a color correction. Just it could be anything. It could be a noise map. I don't even care. Um, I play around, honestly. Um, I don't love node texturing i'm not the best at it and i'm just going to say that i'm just i'm not i do a lot of it in substance because it's automated it does all the channels for you it's great you should have a little bit of knowledge of how this works that's why we're going to do a little bit here um but let's just do anything that gives you color okay so we could do a color key uh color space we could do is there a color correction color key there it is color correction let's drag that here you get a bunch of controls. Um, it's just the one I remember that I use a lot for other stuff. And then put that in number two. Okay. And now, oh, we should have had our, should have our window over here. So you can see how that changed. I apologize. So if we delete this uh, strand, it goes back to black. Because outside of the projection, it's not projecting anything. It's black. It's nothing. It's empty, right? There's nothing there. But as soon as I add something to that color stack of the layer shader, ooh, look at that. Now we got something going. So let's make this like, I don't know, we can make it really any color. So change the input here and just, I don't know, fart around with it. See what you like. Maybe we'll keep it hot pink. See if I care. I like none of this. I hate this. It disgusts me. Yeah, no, that's terrible. My computer's heating up because I'm rendering pretty fast here. Uh, let's go with just black. <laughs> let's, dark, let's do dark gray. So at least it's something. Okay, there we go. Tra -la -la -la. Okay, now we've got our other piece. Okay, well, luckily we're not projecting anything on that other piece. So we could technically just drag and drop right there. And then we could render it again. 
And look at that. The backside is now gray also. Pretty good. Not too shabby. Um, I don't know why. It's getting all fuzzy. There we go. It's not too bad. Um, now, if we move the camera, it will change where it's projected, which could be a problem for you. So don't don't change it unless you want to. So we could go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Look at that. Now it's projecting through there because it's on there twice. So we don't want to do that. But just remember, this is how a projection map works. You can put it wherever you want. It's crazy. Yeah, dig it. Okay, so let's do one more thing. Let's add some shadows. Okay, we need some light shadows. So let's pretend you might move this thing. So what I would suggest, so let's let's, uh, let's stop, uh, hit this button to stop rendering constantly. Uh, if you have a killer computer, then pff, do whatever you want. Uh, but, you know, it, it takes a lot of horsepower if you are constantly changing stuff. Okay, so if I move this, right, like if I move the body of this thing, then that means the camera projection moves too, right? So if I move that there, I'm only going to get half of my logo. Well, that sucks. So what you could do is just select this whole thing again, right, and just group it, okay, and name that group. That way, if you move this thing, you are not going to lose where the camera is, okay? Because that camera, again, is in charge of where your projection map is going to go. So uh, let's add some lights real quick. We are going to, we got to bring back that render, uh, the render window so that we can actively see, oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, so we can actively see how the light affects our scene, okay? Now we can cut down the quality of that render. I'm not going to get into that right now. Let's just get some lights in here, okay? So let's go to create panel. Uh, lights are right here. Use Arnold lights. Don't use photometric. Arnold is the drop down right there, okay? Arnold lights. Click, drag. Beautiful. Oh, I didn't turn this on. Damn it. It'd been so much cooler if I did that. All right, let's do it again. Anticipation. Okay, pretend I didn't do that. I got rid of that. All right, oh, no lights. No lights. All right, let's add a new light. Here we go. Click, drag, ooh, look at that. It's kind of snazzy, kind of not. So what you can do is just pull this guy up. Bring it in, maybe. Make sure the light source is out of your render because you don't want really them to see where it's coming from. Uh, you can zoom out a bunch. I mean. You should really have a frame set up for this. You could set up a camera, and but I don't want to talk about cameras quite yet. Uh, so I'm actually going to put this at the center, just like that. And I'm going to duplicate, or let's up this light a little bit. So go into the modify panel of that light. And then there are two values. There's intensity and exposure. The more you bring up intensity, the more the scene's going to light up from that. See how it's getting brighter? It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. Let's just crank it up a little bit. Now, there is a nice bit of knowledge of how to mess with the uh, intensity and exposure. And I would like you to fiddle with it. But you should definitely read the, uh, the, the, the help in uh, 3D Studio Max for the uh, renderer, okay? Because the render has a lot of detail in it. And we're going to duplicate that over there. Okay. Let's just say copy. Maybe we could just add a... Maybe, maybe we'll add another light. And... We could... No, let's create another light. Let's uh, create a light right there and let's change this one to a daylight system real quick so if you go down to the type of light let's go to sky dome there we go okay that's probably what we should have done in the first place we don't need a monkey with these right now because now we're going to blow it out a little bright it's a little bright a little bright we got to pull that we got to pull that down 
Where is my intensity? Back up. Hello? Where'd it go? Did I close the thing? General. Shape. Shape rendering. Color intensity. There it is. Jeez. I'm like blind. It's terrible. Okay. There's just a lot of... There's a lot of options, you know? So I'm going to drop that down. And I'm going to drop this one down too. So bring those both down quite a bit. And this is up to you. This is 100% your feeling on what it should look like. But this Sky Dome is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting to get your general light. Okay, so let's actually zoom back in. Sorry about that. Stayed out real far. But now we got a nice... Oops, jeez. And shaky. We got a nice shadow right next to it. We could probably bring in one of the other lights, kind of cast a little bit more of a direct shadow. But if we select over here the different lights, so let's go with number three, that is the Sky Dome. We could uh, bring it down a little bit. No, that makes it look like it's dusk. There we go. Yeah, let's just leave it for now. So the problem is I'm getting a little frazzled when I do this because there's so much that you could do at the same time. Uh, I'm not going to add a material to the little tabs. In fact, I'm going to stop my computer going crazy because it wants to render and re-render and make it beautiful. So now that you have the phone stand of your dreams, uh, what you can do is save this image out. JPEG, PNG, whatever you like. And then um, show your mom, I guess. That'd be nice. I bet she'd approve. There's not some creepy guy on the internet. He's just showing you how to use software. He's totally on the up and up. But anyways, uh, so that's kind of the, the basis here. Um, like I said before, we could add like a turbo smooth on this if we wanted to. I don't really want to. It's so negligible at this point. We added enough topology and we did well with the... Uh, shell modifier uh actually i'm gonna go back with my face here so you can see me um yeah we did enough with the shell modifier we added enough geometry that kind of made it look smooth um the smoothing groups are baked into things like chamfer are baked into things like the uh what do you call it the uh shell modifier so if you add a shell modifier you're taking a 2D object. Let me just do this again real quick for you. There we go. Let's let's just do a, a new object real quick here. So let's let's add a box. I'm, I just want to go over this concept one more time real quick. So let's just make a plane actually. Okay, this is a one-dimensional object. Okay, is I'll get rid of this guy. And I'll isolate this selection real quick. Uh, all right, so this is a one-dimensional object. It has a single smoothing group, okay? Now, if I turbo smooth this, nothing, right? Because it's one plane. You can't smooth one plane. You just divide it into four, okay? So now, let's uh, add a shell modifier, okay? And let's bring it up quite a bit. So what it did is it took those faces and independently extruded them in one dimension from the normal of that one plane, okay? Now it has created smoothing groups for all sides because that's what it does. It knows, this modifier knows it's going to push out in the normal direction. So it probably assumes you're making something that's got some thickness to it, like think about a 2 by 4 think about something machined something that you just want to extrude in one dimension. You just want to add thickness to it. So now when I hit Turbo Smooth, it's going to glorp, glorp it up, right? But what if I hit Smoothing Groups? It's perfect. It's dividing them each equally, just like that top one. Okay, and the reason is because it's added Smoothing Groups. Well, I hit the checkbox. But those Smoothing Groups are on there by default, okay? Uh, so again, when we go back to our object that we made here, a lot of it was just starting with a single plane, right? Extruding it into three dimensions, but still the local normal of those 
uh, planes were pushed in their local normal so that when I added that shell modifier, bada bing, bada boom, it's perfect. We added the cylinder, we booleaned it in. It's a little janky how we did it. But because of the smoothing groups that are on the cylinder, I mean, the smoothing groups come to show that the cylinder is round and the side is flat. Okay, so we didn't even have to edit those smoothing groups because they're already flat and we just used the round shape that already exists on the other one. So something to think about is when you're extru or when you're making objects, maybe think about what type of objects they're coming from. Like, ooh, that looks like it could be a cylinder. Ooh, that looks like it could be a, a I don't know, a, another cylinder or a, a cube or something. And then try to work those smoothing groups because you don't need to cut these. I mean, you don't need, like, if we look at this guy down here, this is a huge N-gon, right? That's technically bad. And by the way, it's grouped up. So let's uh, ungroup or explode. Oh, up to you. Uh, or just open, and then you can close it again. You don't have to do that because we still want that group because we still want to worry about this projection, right? Um so anyways, let's go back into this for just two seconds. Let's hit edit poly one more time for an example. This n-gon here, if we try to smooth this um, outside of the situation, it's going to go bananas. Um, and the way we would fix that, technically, is we would go into like an edge mode, and we would use the cut tool, which is always in this edit geometry, which is always rolled up to begin with. It's pretty stupid. Anyways. So we would extend these all the way across, right? And now, as you can see, we're creating four-sided polygons. So where we started here, well, this is a four-sided polygon now. Um, that's a four-sided polygon. And we would continue that, okay? So we'll get a cut tool, and we could do another one. We could do that one to this one. And, I mean, we could do that one, but we would most likely want to go this way, right? We'd want to go, like, up. We're not going to do that, because then we'd have to... It's quite a bit, but we'd actually want to do this one, because that's a four-sided polygon, so we just went like that. And then if we followed that up, it'd be perfect. But and now, these faces down here... And, of course, we'd have to do the same thing to the other side, right? We'd have to cut here, and then here. And then we'd have to go up. And then we'd match them up to the... To the edges on the top side now they're four-sided polygons now it's technically nice looking geometry um yeah so anywho that is uh one of the one of the reasons that this model was kind of easy it was a good starter model it's because it's a lot of and and you'll see this the more you start modeling the more more you'll be like oh that i could make it out of this cut that in the the edge loops are perfect i don't need to finish them off or you know blah 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 blah, blah. so start thinking in primitive shapes uh start thinking in you know polygon primitives um start thinking about how booleans work you can add or subtract we subtract subtracting is very popular but you could add you could have added those cylinders in the back side it would look stupid but you could do that um yeah that's it for today, I think. I, I think we could go further, but I want to take it a step at a time. We are at an hour and almost 15 minutes. So uh, I just wanted to say if this was helpful to you, um, you know, we just barely scratched the surface of materials. We barely scratched the surface of modeling, uh, barely scratched the surface of uh, some of the tricks you can do with Booleaning. I think we'll go a little bit deeper. Um, on some of these individual tools. The videos don't need to be so long, but uh, it's good to see how they are used practically, okay, like in a practical sense. Um, so I just want to sign off. Uh, thanks for watching. If you watched, uh, I'm going to save this forever because it's beautiful, and I hope you do too. Otherwise, um, if there's something you need help with or you got any questions or some great topics of things to, to work on, just leave me a message. I know not a lot of people are watching, but if you are, Thanks. That's cool. I appreciate that. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm just going to do it anyways. Because I got, I got time. Anywho. Uh, and, yeah. Anyway, besides getting into it, uh, take care. Uh, I was just going to throw my last thing here. Uh, if you like what I did, come back. If you didn't like what I did, don't come back. Or maybe you'll like something I did differently in the future, like 
a different topic. Uh, if not, uh, tell me I'm terrible. That's fine, too. Uh, otherwise, you can check out my cartoons. My cartoons, they kind of suck, but I like them. And I'm working on new ones uh, when I'm not doing this. But this is taking up some time. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get there together. But uh, take care. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day, week, or month. Whatever. Take care. Bye.